About 62% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, 43% have no emergency savings, and 51% don't have enough savings to last more than six months. I think many people would benefit from budgeting and also truly understanding where their money is going. Today I'm going to go through what I don't buy in order to save money. This ideology is what helped me save up for my Tesla and my house and what is helping me still to this day grow financially. The first thing that I do not buy is coffee. Even if I'm traveling or something for work, I still do not buy coffee at all like from Dunkin Donuts or Starbucks, that is just not something that I do. This can really add up, especially when you're buying those fancy drinks. And it's hard to not wanna do that every day because it does taste great and helps you wake up for your day. My suggestion if you are a coffee drinker is to make it from home because the cost difference between buying a drink at Starbucks versus making your own coffee for a couple weeks or so using just a bag of coffee is a totally different scenario for money. So you'll be saving so much more money if you just buy your coffee at the store and then make it from at home. The next thing that I do not spend money on is going out to eat. Now, yes, I do go out to eat every once in a while, but this is not a weekly occurrence. I never go out for lunch. And if we do go out, it's mostly kind of a budget option for us or a special occasion. If you are the person who is eating out every single day for lunch, then not doing that and bringing your lunch from home will save you so much money, just similarly to what the coffee would do as well. If you're eating out a lot, you're really just paying for the convenience of having someone else make it for you. My suggestion is meal prepping each week, maybe on a Sunday when you have a bit more time, then you can meal prep, put some in the freezer, and then when you're ready for lunch, you'll just pull it right out before work and then eat that instead of going out. The next thing that I do not buy is vacations. So Tom and I only go on vacations very sparingly and we usually tag on to one of my work trips. So I'll go up for work and then I'll stay an extra one or two days and then he'll fly up and we'll meet and we'll just stay together and go sightsee. We haven't really been on a vacation in a very long time that we have planned other than our honeymoon, which we even tagged on to staying with his dad during that time in order to save money. Now this is a bit extreme because I think traveling and having those experiences is really important for our overall personal growth. So I definitely don't wanna deter you from traveling, but you wanna make sure that you're traveling with purpose and not over traveling just to travel and spend money. My suggestion here is planning out your vacations at the beginning of the year so that you know exactly how much money you're going to have allotted for each vacation. I feel like when I'm on vacation, money is not necessarily the same as when I'm at home. And so if something, I want something, then I feel more inclined that I'm able to buy it because I'm on vacation. So it makes it so much easier if you have a budget and then you have to stick to those parameters because if you do want to spend more money on vacation, you have that allotted and you then won't exceed your budget. I also don't buy the latest fashion trends. Now, it's so much easier for me to be able to buy key pieces in my wardrobe that I can wear for many years to come than just one piece, maybe for 12 bucks that I might wear once. So for me, I just don't feed into these trends. Even though I work in fashion, I still don't feed into these trends and I make sure that I'm buying timeless pieces. This allows me to get a better value out of my clothing because I can spend more on the pieces of clothing themselves so that they last longer and they're nicer quality, but then my cost per wear is lower. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit controversial here, but I do not buy alcohol. I am not a big drinker. I will sometimes have a drink if we go out with friends, but I do not drink at home. And then it's just more of a personal preference. I just don't find it enjoyable. So I don't buy alcohol, which alcohol can be super expensive, especially if you like those fancy drinks, which I most certainly do. 
I'm not saying you have to be this extreme, but my recommendation is making sure you're truly understanding how much you're spending at the bar on drinks because the bars just mark up the drinks so much compared to if you buy the alcohol and then bring it home and make the drink. So definitely be cognizant about how much you're spending when you go for a night out. I also don't spend money on bottled water. Now, there's a couple reasons I don't do this. Number one is the plastic. I don't like buying drinks in plastic bottles. It, I would pr much prefer glass over plastic, so I don't buy them because of that reason. But I also don't buy them because I have a filter that I use at home, and this allows us to get more water instead of just buying individual bottles and creating waste. We can use the filter, which is also not creating waste and is cheaper. Instead of using a plastic container, we use some kind of clean canteen-esque type product in order to hold our drinks. And then we can have this water bottle for a very long time because we can then clean it and reuse it. Now I'm not perfect here because I do spend money sometimes on canned seltzer waters. I am such a sucker for seltzer water and I really love it. It's my one vice in life. So I do spend money sometimes on buying those cans, but I do not ever buy water in a bottle. The next thing that I do not buy is cable TV. Now, if I'm interested in the latest news, then I'll just watch the news on YouTube. And then if I want to see something on TV, usually it's streaming on another network like Netflix or Hulu or some other place that I can usually find it if I want it. Cable TV is so expensive. Like it is just crazy to me how expensive it has become. And that is just not something that I am willing to pay for. If you want to cut the cable cord, then I definitely suggest checking out a streaming service. Spectrum has one that we have tried before, and they're much cheaper than using any kind of cable. Now kind of moving along with Spectrum itself. So I do not purchase expensive phone plans. Now I have had an expensive phone plan in the past because I was like, maybe it will be better. And I was using my phone a lot for travel and work, but then I found Spectrum and it is so great because it does use the lines of uh, Verizon Wireless, which is what I had before. So even when I travel remotely in like very remote areas in the United States, I still get really decent reception and only pay $14 a month for it. Before I was on Verizon and it was unlimited data, but it was $70 a month. But now I pay $14 a month with Spectrum, but that's only for one gig. So if I do go above the one gig, which I basically never do, but if I do go above one gig, then I do have to pay beyond that. My suggestion to you guys is definitely shop around. I know a lot of us have been on the same plan for a really long time. I was on my parents' Verizon plan for years, so I always just figured that I would continue using Verizon. But once I looked at the numbers, it just didn't make sense for me to stay on that plan because I was just spending so much more money and Spectrum was just as good as Verizon. The last thing that I do not pay for are car washes. Now I'd like to keep my car super clean, especially because I do make Tesla videos for YouTube. So I want my car to be super shiny and not dirty and messy in these videos, but I do not pay for car washing because it is really expensive and it's something that I can do at home. There are many services that we probably all use that we could do at home. So my suggestion to you guys is really understanding what you are paying for in terms of services and understanding whether or not it is better for you to do it in terms of how much time it's going to take you or if it's actually cheaper in terms of time and money to pay for someone to do it for you. Not spending money on these things has helped me save more money and buy the things that I truly want. I recommend writing down everything that you are spending money on monthly, then creating a budget and eliminating things that you don't need or could live without. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like down below as that really helps out my channel. Also make sure to subscribe as I post videos about Tesla and personal finance every Tuesday and Thursday. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.